Hello, my name is Emma and in today's video I am going to teach you about sequencers. So sequencers are words like first, next, then, after that, and finally. We use sequencers when we are talking about steps or the order of doing things. So we will use sequencers when we tell stories. We use sequencers when we give instructions, um, such as how to do something, okay? Because when we tell someone how to do something, we're giving them a lot of different steps. And so sequencers help us organize these steps. Okay, so let's uh, get started and let's see some examples of how we use sequencers. So I have here my five steps, first, next, then, after that, and finally. These are the sequencers we're focusing on in today's lesson. So I want you to imagine, you want to tell somebody how to make a hamburger, okay? When you make a hamburger, there are different steps to making a hamburger. First, you take a bun. Next, you put lettuce on the bun. Then, you add a hamburger, or the meat, after that, maybe you put ketchup or mustard. And finally, you put on the top bun and you eat it. So these are the five steps in making a hamburger. That's just an example of how we would use this type of language, okay? So when we're using sequencers, first always comes first, okay? So notice first is number one. So when we're giving instructions uh, or we're giving steps, this is how we would start. When we're ending our instructions or at the end of what we're saying, when we're giving a how-to or telling somebody how to do something, we can end with this word, finally. So first is the first thing you say, finally is the last. And then we have these three, next, then, and after that. They all mean the same thing. So you can use then as your second step. You can use uh, after that as your second step. You can use these um, interchangeably. So it doesn't matter the order of these three. First, then, next, after that, finally. We can use sequencers in that way too. So let's think of some more examples. I want you to use these uh, in your own life, or think about ways you can use these in your own life. I want you to think about when you woke up this morning. What were five things you did? And think about the order you did them in. So maybe, first, you heard your alarm clock. Okay, so first, you woke up and you heard your alarm clock. What's the second thing that happened? Well, maybe if you're like me, Next, I had a shower. I took a shower. Okay, after that, I ate breakfast. Then, I brushed my teeth. And finally, um, ooh, what did I do finally this morning? I think I went for a walk. Okay, so those were the five things I did this morning in the order I did them. So I want you to try. Think about the five things you did this morning. And you can say them out loud to practice, okay? So, first, you, next, then, after that, and finally. So let's look at another example of how we can use these sequencers. So one of my favorite things in life is drinking tea. I love tea. So I am going to use sequencers to teach you how to make a cup of tea. So first thing I want to use is the word first. The first thing you do is first, you boil the water, okay? So you boil water, you make it very hot. Then you add tea to your cup, okay? Maybe you have a tea bag. Next, you add the hot water to the cup. After that, add milk and sugar. Finally, you stir it and you drink it, okay? 
So these are steps in making a cup of tea. Now, if I wanted to, I could go and make um, more steps, okay? And I can use some of these multiple times. So maybe I can use then um, to talk about then you let the tea steep or you let the tea, um, you, I don't know, then you add honey. So there are other steps you might add. And you can use some of these sequencers multiple times. Again, the main thing is use first for the first step and finally for the last step. Let's look at one more example of using sequencers when we're talking about how to do something. Okay, so let me tell you about a true story. I have a friend named Lucy and she is beautiful, smart, funny. She's a wonderful woman and right now she's looking for a boyfriend. So she asked me for advice. Emma, how can I find the man of my dreams? So this is what I told her. I told her first, think about the qualities you want in the man of your dreams. Do you want him to be funny, intelligent, handsome? What kind of qualities do you want or are you looking for? After that, I told her to think about things she likes to do. So um, for example, Lucy loves rock climbing. So I told her, you know, think about these types of hobbies you like doing. And after that, or next, join a club, maybe join a rock climbing club, join a sports team, uh, join some sort of club that you're interested in where you're likely to meet people. Finally, I told her, find out who is single in your club, okay? And who also has the qualities that you're looking for. So maybe there's a, a really good looking guy at her rock climbing club. So she can find out if he's single and then if she likes him, ask him out for coffee or ask him to go see a movie or something. So these were my tips for Lucy. Now I'm not really good with the whole dating thing. So I wanna know what is your advice for my friend Lucy? For your homework, yes, you have homework. I want you in the comments section to write using sequencers some advice for how can Lucy find the man of her dreams. So when you write this, I want you to use the words first, then, next, after that, and finally. Lucy will be looking at these comments um, to get some sort of dating advice. So please think creatively and really help my friend Lucy because she could really use that. Okay, it'd be good. So thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. You can practice what you've learned by visiting our website at www.ingvid.com. And there you can find a quiz to practice these sequencers and everything you've learned in this video. You can also subscribe to my channel where you'll find a lot more videos on grammar, writing, vocabulary, expressions, and many more topics. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care.